Welcome to the fourth quarter FI24 earnings conference call for Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. We have with us today Mr. Ramdev Agarwal, Chairman, Mr. Motilal Oswal, Managing Director, Mr. Naveen Agarwal, Managing Director, Mr. Ajay Menon, CEO, Broking and Distribution, Mr. Ashish Shankar, CEO, Wealth Management, Mr. Sukesh Bhawal, CEO, Housing Finance, Mr. Shalibadra Shah, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Chetan Parmar, Head Investor Relations. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now invite Mr. Naveen Agarwal to make his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Agarwal. Good evening, friends. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you once again to the Mutual Financial Services Earnings Call uh, for the quarter in the year ending March 2024. Uh, let me start by providing you a very quick snapshot of the quarter and the year ending March 2024. Uh, the year FI24 consolidated tax, including uh, op other op uh, comprehensive income, uh, uh, OCI, uh, to get 2,626 crores, and for the fourth quarter, to get 625 crores. The consolidated ROE uh, uh, was 35%. The consolidated operating revenue uh, for the last fiscal year was at 5,075 crores, up 33% year on year. And for the fourth quarter was at uh, 1569 crores, uh, up by 60% year on year and 29% quarter on quarter. Our consolidated operating profit after tax for the fourth quarter to get 6% year on year. In and the operating profit after tax for the full year is to get 1535 crores, up by 38% on a year on year basis. Our operating return on equity was uh, 25% compared to the consolidated return on equity of 35%. Uh, we delivered the highest ever quarterly and yearly capital market business profit uh, after tax at 251 crores, up by 68% uh, year on year and 23% quarter on quarter. Uh, and for the full year at 803 crores, up by 47% on a year on year basis. The asset and wealth business reported a strong growth in profit after tax in the fourth quarter at 210 crores, up by 79% year on year, and 46% quarter on quarter. And for the 12 months ending March 24, this number is 607 crores, up by 34% year on year. Housing finance profit after tax stood at 31 crores for the quarter and 129 crores for the full year. Our net worth at the end of the year was at 8,730. Uh, two crores. Uh, this is up by 40% year on year. Our 10 year net worth uh, has compounded at 22% uh, per annum. In light of the strong performance for the last five years and the encouraging outlook for our businesses, the board has announced the first ever uh, post listing in 2007, the first ever bonus issue of three shares for every share held. Uh, based on feedback received from investors and analysts over the last several quarters, we have made some changes in our segmental reporting. Uh, firstly, the operating profit line of each of our operating businesses had a capital charge as they operated with uh, accumulated profits post dividend payout uh, by all the operating businesses. Uh, I mean, basically, our operating uh, the, the operating businesses operated with zero uh, net worth as they distributed all the capital uh, to the treasury. As, uh, as the group follows the double engine model where there is the operating business as the first engine and the treasury investment uh, as the second engine, the operating business profits post dividend payout are deployed in the treasury investment. So far, operating businesses were operating with this zero net worth and their working capital uh, requirement was fully, was charged uh, full borrowing cost without credit for their past accumulated profits. In the new scheme of things, the accumulated profits of the respective businesses are treated as their net worth, and there is no deduction of a notional capital charge from the operating profit. Any surpluses with the operating businesses can be lent to the Treasury at the actual cost of borrowing. Firstly, uh, this more appropriately reflects the capital deployed in each of our businesses and the return on equity for these businesses. The second uh, uh, change that we have made is 
uh, we have presented the two HNI businesses, which is the private client group and the private wealth management together. In the last quarter, we were presenting both of these businesses separately. Our uh, private wealth business caters to HNI and ultra HNI clients. Uh, we have a private client group uh, within our broking and distribution business, which also caters to HNI clients. Like the wealth uh, business, which has 251 RMs. Uh, we have another 330 RMs in the private client group. Uh, private uh, client group also offers wealth solutions like mutual funds, AIF, PMS, etc. Uh, besides offering uh, broking services, given the identical HNI client base of both of these businesses, uh, we propose to consolidate it, consolidate both of these businesses under the wealth vertical for the reporting purpose in the presentation. Let me now quickly run you through the industry landscape and some of the key trends that we see. Uh, the increased retail participation in Indian capital markets has been remarkable, with DMAT accounts experiencing a, a threefold growth in the last three years. This surge uh, has translated into a robust uh, growth in broking volumes, uh, which have expanded almost 13x uh, during this time period. The addition of 36.9 million DMAT accounts this year on a base of 150 million DMAT accounts uh, signals a significant runway for sustained growth with projections indicating a trajectory of at least 20% for the medium term. Likewise, uh, the mutual fund industry has witnessed substantial uh, growth driven by persistent efforts from the distribution community and NP. Monthly SIP flows have surged uh, by a remarkable 24% compounded per annum for the last seven years, reaching a record 192 billion uh, in the recent months uh, from 39 billion seven years ago. Uh, this momentum combined with active uh, equity mutual fund base of approximately uh, 24 trillion rupees as of uh, March 24 underscores the potential for uh, sustained growth, particularly for equity focused asset management companies like ours. Turning now to our segmental performance, starting with the capital market business, this business comprises of retail broking, institutional equities, and investment banking business. Uh, the revenues for this business grew uh, to 982 crores, up by 68% year on year in the fourth quarter, and uh, was 3,235 crores uh, for the full year, up by 37%. Uh, profits for this business uh, for the quarter was at 251 crores, up 68% year on year, and for the full year was at 803 crores, up 47% year on year. The overall ADTO grew by 122% year on year to 7.2 lakh crores in the fourth quarter. Uh, our uh, retail cash market share in the fourth quarter stood at 8.2%, up by 307 basis points year on year, up by 68 basis points quarter on quarter. Our retail f and premium market share in the fourth quarter stood at 8.7%. This again is up by 214 basis points year on year and is up by 55 basis points quarter on quarter. The trend of uh, increasing market share across both of these segments uh, continues like we've seen in the last several years. The NSE active clients grew to 8.8 .8 lakhs at the end of this year. We acquired 1.8 lakh clients in the fourth quarter and 6.2 lakh clients in the full year. Our distribution AUM uh, grew by 27% year on year to 27,000 crores plus. Our distribution net sales uh, for the quarter grew to 1,336 crores and for the full year grew to 3,046 crores, is up by 138%. Uh, our focus is on ramping up the distribution uh, team strength uh, to improve our currently low uh, cross-sell ratio of just 6%. We are hoping to uh, grow this distribution team 3x uh, in three year time. Our net interest income for the fourth quarter was at 200 crores, up by 67%, and for the full year was at 662 crores, up by 42%. Investment banking business executed 17 deals, worth 19,100 crores during the year. Revenues stood at 104 crores, this is up by nearly three times on a year-on-year -year basis. The so pipeline of sign mandates uh, provide a strong visibility of growth for the next year as well. The overall capital market profit before tax margin improved to 48% from 45% in the last year. Turning to the asset and wealth businesses, the revenues for the quarter were at 589 crores, up by 58% year on year, and at 1,774 crores uh, for the full year, up by 31% year on year. 
The profits for the fourth quarter stood at 210 crores, up by 79% year on year. So the full year stood at 607 crores, up by 34% year on year. Our asset management business, AUM, across mutual funds, CMS, AIF, uh, grew by 57% year on year to 71,810 crores. Uh, revenues were at 784 crores, up 25% year on year uh, for the uh, full year. And for the quarter, we're at 258 crores, uh, up by 72% year on year. Uh, over 95% of all our strategies uh, based on AUM uh, are outperforming the benchmark quite strongly. And this turnaround in uh, performance has led to a visible improvement in gross sales. Uh, gross sales are at 17,400 crores in uh, the last year. This is up by 116% year on year. And the exit quarter gross sales stand at 6,100 crores compared to the 17,400 crores full year number. Our target is to double the gross sales in uh, uh, the next uh, financial year led by strong traction that we are witnessing in our existing products as well as a slew of new products that we propose to launch uh, in the rest of the year. Our mutual fund AUM grew uh, by 65% to 48,800 crores. Alternate AUM grew by 41% to nearly 23,000 crores. Uh, AIF AUM crossed 10,000 crore mark. Uh, we added 10 lakh new SIPs uh, during the last financial year. Uh, the SIP flows grew very strongly from 507 crores in the exit quarter of uh, FY23 to 967 crores in the exit quarter of FY24. We expect a similar traction uh, over the coming quarters as well. Our overall SIP AUM stood at 11,900 crores. The private equity business fee earning AUM stood at over 10,000 crores across our growth uh, uh, cap funds as well as real estate funds. Uh, revenues for this business uh, was at 217 crores for the full year, up by 18% year on year, and was at 83 crores for the fourth quarter, up by uh, up by 39% year on year. Uh, we propose uh, we are presently uh, uh, in the process of uh, our uh, higher EF, uh, the real estate uh, fifth, uh, uh, the sixth series. Uh, launch we've already done the first close and uh, we're looking at a final close of 2000 crores during the course of the year uh, our uh, fifth series uh, growth uh, capital fund uh, is expected to be launched in the second half of this financial year uh, we raised for a half thousand crores in our fourth series and are looking at a substantially bigger uh, sum for the fifth series uh, growth capital fund uh, our wealth and PCG AUM stood at 1.23 lakh crores. This was up by 78% year on year. Revenues uh, for the full year stood at 772 crores, up by 41% year on year. And for the quarter, exit quarter stood at 248 crores, up by 53% year on year. We added 110 RMs during the fourth quarter uh, and a total of 177 RMs during the full year. Our incremental uh, RM growth, the relationship manager growth, uh, will be more measured and strategic. Uh, incrementally, the focus will also be on improving productivity and margin uh, for this. Turning to our housing finance business, uh, we reported a profit of 31 crores for the uh, fourth quarter and 129 crores for the full year. Our AUM uh, stood at 4,047 crores, up by 6% year on year. Disbursement grew sharply uh, to 480 crores in the fourth quarter, up by 94% quarter on quarter and 33% year on year. And we're at 1,017 crores uh, for the full year. Our net interest income stood at 312 crores uh, for the full year and 78 crores for the fourth quarter, while NIMS for the full year, NIM for the full year stood at 7.6%. Our yield on advances uh, stood at 14.2%, up by 30 basis points year on year, and our spreads were maintained at 5.9%. The gross and net, PA, net NPA numbers at the end of the year stood at 90 and 40 basis points respectively, gearing stood at two times, capital adequacy at 51%, and return on assets at 3.2%. Uh, we have doubled our sales force during the course of the last financial year uh, to 925 RMs, and are looking to uh, double this uh, count once again in the coming financial year. Uh, with a new uh, and a strong leadership team in place, 
uh, we believe that we are geared to double our disbursements in uh, financial year 25 compared to the year 24. To sum up, our capital market business has demonstrated remarkable performance, reporting all-time high quarterly and yearly profits and market shares, uh, both in the cash and the futures and option segment uh, at 82 and 8.7% respectively. Our asset and wealth management uh, uh, business touched a AUM of 1.95 lakh crores. Uh, the asset management business in particular has seen strong improvement in performances leading to gross sales of 17,000 crores, and we are looking to meaningfully scale up the AUM. Uh, wealth management is progressing towards scalability with strengthened leadership and ongoing investments in RMs. Uh, HSC business uh, sales force uh, is being strengthened and productivity is being optimized uh, to drive uh, doubling of uh, disbursements next year. Overall, uh, we are very excited about the growth prospects offered by each of our core businesses in the next three years. I uh, will now open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. First question is from Abhishek Nagaraj from All's Wealth Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I have a question related to the wealth management business. Um, wanted to understand, uh, you know, the average number of families per RM is kind of lesser than our competitors, but our AUM per RM is higher. Is there something that we fundamentally do different or target a different segment, which is why uh, the the RM is able to handle a higher AUM? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, she's hi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what we've done is over the last two years, we've capacitized the business and uh, there has been a lot of hiring and capacitizing in the RM uh, strength. So uh, the newer RMs take a little time to scale up their AEMs. So that's one of the reasons why you see the average, uh, the number of families being lesser. Uh, about 60% of our RMs are less than two years vintage at the moment in the wealth management business. Okay, is that typically because of the higher uh, uh, hiring that has happened uh, off late or is it because of a higher churn? And the other question I had was, what is the typical time taken by an RM to become stable in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, the full capacity that he can handle uh, in the no number of families? So it takes uh, roughly between three to four years for the RM to get fully capacitized in terms of the number of families that they manage. Okay. Uh, the other question I had was on the cost per RM. You know, it typically increases over time. Uh, I understand the RM pool right now is... Um, you know, 60% of them are uh, less than two years, but over time, you know, the cost increases as well. So how are we thinking about maintaining the same gross margin? Is it through wallet share increase or, uh, you know, increasing the capacity of an RM? And any strategy around that to maintain the yield? Yeah, so typically what happens is as the vintage of the RM grows, the number of families that uh, he or she manages or the AUM they manage, it also grows. And that also results in increased productivity. So in the first year, typically an RM delivers one, one and a half times productivity. It goes up to three and a half, four times by the third to fourth year. So that typically results in increased margins. So whenever you hire aggressively, the margins tend to be a little subdued. And as the productivity kicks in, the margins tend to improve. Got it. One last question was on, uh, you know, there is a high increase in the number of RMs that we hired last quarter. Uh, is there something in the business that you're seeing which is why you want to get this capacity in-house or uh, it is more of, you know, in the longer term, you would want to uh, have a more stable base with a higher vintage RM so productivity increases over time? So like Naveen mentioned, the size of opportunity in the wealth management business as well as the PCG business is extremely big. And uh, we are not only increasing the number of RMs, we are also increasing the number of location so from here on the hiring will be more measured and the focus will be more on productivity and margins 
Okay, got it. I have another couple of questions. I'll come back in the queue. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Avinash Singh from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good uh, evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two questions. Uh, first one is again on the wealth management. Now that you have started to sort of uh, present your wealth management and PCG together, now looking ahead in terms of a strategy, uh, is there some sort of a uh, you know, focus, I mean, a clientele segment where in terms of your uh, uh, investable wealth for family in your preferred pick, I mean, uh, like going more towards uh, slightly lower, say, a 5 to more, 2 to 5 to band or like uh, sticking with the UHNI family or kind of, a, so if you can sort of uh, explain here that with this kind of, a, you know, uh, PCGs and wealth putting uh, a sort of a focus getting together, what sort of a family or a sort of a clinical base in terms of the average area or investable wealth you would be targeting? And uh, how sort of are you are thinking to keep these two businesses together? Because I mean, a UHNI versus a PCG will be slightly uh, on different strategy. Uh, that's first. And second, I mean, uh, on the booking side, uh, I'm cognizant of the fact that you have relatively uh, lower uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, dependency on uh, uh, derivatives. However, if at all, I mean, the derivatives volumes were to sort of a moderate or even temporary, they were to decline. I mean, what sort of a cost composition in the broking side you have variable or uh, and fixing nature, and how that will affect profitability? Is there any sort of a concern around FNO volume sort of a moderate? Thanks. Yeah. So typically the. Uh PCG and the wealth management business would operate in two segments, the HNI and the ultra HNI segment, five to twenty-five pros and twenty-five pro plus. So the wealth management seg wealth management business operates in both segments. PCG operates in the five to twenty-five crore segment. What happens is that predominantly majority of the customers on the PCG side get onboarded with broking as a product, and then uh, we look at uh, upselling through distribution products. Whereas in wealth management, most of the clients would get onboarded through wealth mandates and they would be offered broking as well. And broking, Ajay, maybe you can come in on the FNO side. Yeah, coming to our overall business uh, on the broking side, uh, uh, as you know, we are a full service broker. We have a good cash market business based on our research and advisory capacity, uh, and we charge the full broking on the cash market. So the component of cash market brokerage is well aligned as compared with the so it's almost 55-45 uh, in that ratio. So to that extent, uh, in, if there are any changes in the derivatives uh, as per the uh, guidelines which are coming out or which may come out, we are very well, very well aligned to manage our business based on our advisory and research capabilities based on the business requirements. So we, we are well aligned with both the segments in the way we want to handle our customers. And also, uh, cost flexibility is concerned, as you know, our booking business is the highest, we are the largest franchisee broker and we are the highest revenue salience of uh, the franchisee business, which is a highly, which is an entirely variable, you know, cost uh, model. And so to that extent, uh, any volatility in, uh, you know, the market uh, uh, will have uh, a, a lot lower impact because even during the upside, uh, you know, the offering leverage, at least as far as the franchisee side of the business is, a lot lower. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions, please press star and one. Next question is from Vivek Ramakrishnan from BSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good evening and congratulations on a great performance. My questions all are around the broking book uh, in terms of the loan book. How stable is this book? Uh, if the market has some disruptions or the perceived returns come down, will this book decrease in size? And uh, so that's uh, part A. The part B is what are the yields that you get on this uh, book? Uh, because that will also affect the rate of return, especially because interest rates are very high. 
And uh, the last part of it is, how do you manage ALM in this book, given the fact that uh, it probably is a short tenor book and uh, you are borrowing long term uh, here and there? Yeah, hi, Vivek. So basically, uh, in respect of the uh, lending book in our broking business, this uh, typically is the margin trade finance book, uh, where uh, this is uh, typically linked to the uh, cash market segment predominantly, where uh, as uh, you've been seeing that the cash volumes have been growing, so this book has been uh, sharply growing. Well, given that we have a good set of uh, franchising and HMI clients who basically also adapt to this uh, lending, so we've seen a, a, a very strong growth over the last four years in this uh, book. So we believe that uh, with the strong structural changes, uh, this book will continue to grow. Uh, if you look at the industry also, that book has been continuously growing uh, across all players. And for us, there has been a very substantial growth, given that we have a strong balance sheet uh, with a very strong uptake in the network, with the network which has happened over the last uh, few years. Uh, so by virtue of that, uh, the overall uh, leverage uh, continues to be uh, stable at 1.6 times. And from an ALM perspective, uh, our, uh, while the book is lent as a short term because it is a book where positions are taken and uh, when the positions are liquidated, the cash comes out. Uh, the excess uh, happens uh, uh, as per the regulatory framework. The borrowings can be accessed only through the uh, short term route uh, for this book uh, given the regulatory framework itself because uh, we can raise money only through commercial papers or have the bank, short term bank borrowings against this. Uh, you're not permitted to raise uh, non convertible debentures, uh, long term borrowings against this book. So, predominantly, this is this will be a function of uh, short term uh, borrowings. Uh, so, from an ALM perspective, the asset is also short term and the borrowings are also short term to that extent it matches. Uh, plus, we have a very strong liquidity uh, facilities available uh, on tap. So, at any point of time, we have almost one up to 3,000 crores of uh, banking lines outstanding uh, because we have a very strong treasury book on our balance sheet uh, which gives us that ability to uh, uh, borrow on tap this money. So uh, to that extent, uh, to meet any short-term uh, or uh, cyclical obligations, so we are uh, very well aligned to meet the liquidity out of that uh, limits as well. Uh, as far as the yields are concerned, uh, yield, so overall, uh, Names on this book stands at almost uh, about six uh, percent uh, uh, for uh, this book. So our cost of fund is uh, eight seventy five, and uh, yields on the book stands uh, anywhere around fourteen to fifteen percent on an average basis. Excellent, thank you. If you can follow up, uh, then uh, you know you you are in the market for a public issue. So where does the long term debt go into? Yes. So the long term debt will go into actually uh, our working capital in the exchanges because. Uh, as we've seen that uh, volumes have grown very strong uh, over last one year, and in fact, our own volume has uh, grown by almost 133% uh, on a one-year basis, uh, which has led to increase in our working capital that we put in the form of fixed deposits uh, in the exchange uh, through bank guarantees. So uh, as our volumes go up, the base minimum capital that we place to operate at, uh, say, almost around 65-90% uh, capacity, that also goes up. To that extent, we are uh, deploying uh, the uh, money into the working capital. As we have also highlighted that uh, in our prospectus, uh, how the working capital has been for last one year and what we are projecting the increase uh, over the next uh, few quarters on that. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, just I, I, you know, one question on the housing finance business that seems to be doing really well. Uh, you know, you've invested a lot in the business and turned it around. Uh, I think like the wealth business is the pace of uh, expansion going to slow down and it's more splitting of assets. So how does it look like in the next uh, uh, year or two? That's my last question. Thank you. Uh, we are uh, primarily in the affordable housing space and uh, uh, in terms of market share as well, our uh, market the, mar the market is very huge and our market share is uh, very small. And uh, we expect the uh, the affordable space uh, to keep uh, growing at a decent pace. And uh, you know, so, I mean, in terms of prospects for the industry, we uh, we see it uh, very positively uh, in the space uh, that we are in. I, I meant more from your cost and income perspective, actually, in terms of sweating the. Uh, expansion expanded it's like uh, about 45% right now so 
how is it going to trend so cost to income uh, so this uh, 35% uh, uh, is basically because as we highlighted at the start of the call that uh, there has been a strong uh, doubling of the rms sales rms in uh, fy24 and uh, we are investing heavily on uh, on the uh, uh, the sales rms uh, over last three quarters and we expect to even uh, further uh, double the sales rm count in uh, current financial year fy25 so cost to income Uh, would be uh, elevated uh, to that extent. However, uh, as a throughput of disbursements is improving uh, gradually, because uh, if you see our quarter four run rate of disbursements, we did uh, almost 400 crores of disbursements uh, in, in quarter four, and uh, next financial year uh, we are targeting to overall even uh, double the disbursement that we did in FY24. Uh, so that in uh, from FY26 onwards, we would see uh, some respite to uh, the cost to income ratio, which would uh, start coming down. So for FY25, this will continue to remain elevated. Thank you very much, and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Rohan Adwan from Plaid Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my question is that, uh, as you stated, uh, you know the PPG segment has moved from capital markets to asset and wealth management. So can you quantify the amount of PPG revenue that has moved and now it's considered under the asset and wealth management and break it down further into broking and non-broking if possible? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just a moment. Yeah, so total revenues uh, that have been moved into the asset and wealth segment is uh, 438 crores, uh, which belongs to uh, the PCB segment. The total profit uh, for FY24 of uh, PCB segment uh, that has been moved to asset and wealth segment is uh, 184 crores. Yeah. Uh, so that is the uh, impact of this uh, change. Uh, that we have done, uh, and uh, this gets added to our asset and wealth segment, uh, and gets reduced from our capital market segment. And out of this 438 crores, what would be uh, the booking revenue? Yeah. 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 Uh, that is 260 crores is the uh, portion of the uh, booking revenue. Okay, so that is 260, and the balance was a distribution led, which was which was classified under capital markets, and now whether it is broking or distribution led, it comes into asset and wealth management as long as it pertains to the PPD segment. Is that understand? That's right. There is also an NIR component in that okay. because we have a financial line segment where we also have lending to the PPD clients. So it's a combination of distribution and NIR. Oh. So all form of revenue from the PCG segment comes under asset and wealth management now. That's right. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Sunil Desai from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good. Uh, good evening. Uh, congratulations on this good result. So I have uh, two questions. The first one would be uh, that uh, we have seen that on on the broking front, a lot of uh, volumes have increased, right? And we have seen some other brokers also raising money because of the capital requirement. So how are we doing on that front? And uh, do we have still uh, enough uh, working capital available for enough growth, or how is how are we looking on that front? Uh, we uh, don't have any such uh, plans to raise uh, capital for uh, this business. Uh, so we have very strong uh, network, and uh, as I highlighted, that uh, so the network has grown at almost 40 percent. Uh, why was for us? Uh, uh, given the sizable growth in operating profit and and our uh, treasury profit, uh, we have strong uh, enough internal accruals uh, to take care of this. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can uh, can you give a breakup of your uh, FDO EDT and cash EDT for quarter uh, uh, gone by? Yeah. Uh, so uh, cash EDT is six thousand crores, and uh, FDO EDT business premium is fourteen uh, thousand. 
how much for FNO? So EDTO is 6,000 crores on a premium tenure and cash EDTO okay. is 1,000 crores. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Next question is from Avijit Sakare from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I had a couple of questions on the broking business uh, to start with. One is that uh, uh, the, the revenue share with sub brokers, uh, is it the same uh, between, let's say, what he brings in through the broking side uh, as against the distribution business? Yeah, the uh, broking side uh, is different compared to the distribution uh, because, uh, as you know, the broking uh, sharing is uh, much more uh, in our favor. As the distribution uh, part, the sharing will be much much higher in the range of 80 85%. Understood. Understood. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the eight to nine lakh uh, active clients that we have, uh, is is it possible to give some indication of you know what would be let's say the monthly active uh, of these? Um, and then uh, the second part is that uh, also some color on uh, you know how does the overall uh, you know customer base look like uh, you know between people who are only doing um, you know cash equities versus only F and O and those doing uh, both uh, on a monthly basis. Just some some qualitative or or uh, quantitative quantitative color would be helpful. So uh, as well as the monthly when we go, it will be around you know, for like customers on a monthly basis in the overall numbers. Uh, but we will not be able to give you the split between the cash and the FNO as such uh, because that's uh, something we teach it to us. Okay. All right. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Abhishek Nagaraj from All Swell Private Limited. Please go ahead. Um, in my earlier questions, you mentioned that you know looking to also look um, entering to more locations. I'm assuming this is a tier two, tier three entry. Um, one, correct me if I'm wrong, and two, in terms of productivity there, uh, are you seeing any differences or any product differentiation that you would want to uh, get into? And the second question is, uh, how is the management thinking about entering into the affluent and the mass affluent segment? Some of our competitors have tried to do that through digital modes. So, uh, so firstly, uh, the, the huge hiring of r that have happened in the last three years, we highlighted that uh, uh, we believe productivity improvement of those uh, will be a big focus area uh, for us. Uh, obviously, there will be an expansion into newer markets, particularly tier 2 and tier 3, but as far as the offering is concerned, there wouldn't be uh, any differentiation in that offering because uh, that color is not very different according to us for a tier one market versus uh, a tier two market. We are presently very under indexed or not present in the U H and I segment, and that is uh, that is a separate capability that we are building through the appointment of the CIO recently, and and the advisory capabilities that uh, that are getting created. Uh, using digital for affluent mass affluent segment is not something that you know is on the cards as far as the you know wealth management business uh, for us is concerned. Got it. The other question I have was on, um, you know, considering uh, we have multiple businesses housed in the same entity, any thoughts of the management that you would want to probably, in the near future, look at uh, demerging and probably unlocking certain value amongst these businesses? Though I understand there are synergies in between, uh, but uh, is that in, on cards? So we've highlighted our position on this uh, before that we believe there are very strong synergies. Uh, the common brand, uh, as well as the potential cross-sell opportunities. Uh, so, as of now, we have no such plans. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions, please press star and one. Next question is from Abhijit Sakare from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks. Uh, I just wanted the split of the overall wealth AUM uh, across the three categories that you mentioned: uh, ultra, HNI, HNI, and uh, PCG. 
So uh, out of the total AEM between wealth and PCG, wealth is a lakh crore. And uh, from the lakh crores, about 46% is UH and IEM. Got it. And uh, roughly when I look at the ARR, TBR split uh, for the for this business division, it's roughly 60-50. Do you have like um, a number in mind, let's say over the next two to three years, how, how would you want the mix to look like? I think the uh, ARRs will inch up, uh, uh, you know, in a more uh, progressive manner, uh, whereas the transaction income is more dependent on, uh, you know, the kind of products, the kind of preferences that customers have. But over time, the ARR AMs will keep inching up. What has happened is okay. broking as a product is doing extremely well, which gets classified in transaction revenue. And the TVR for us, uh, sorry, the TVR for us, uh, it all largely broking is it or there's some indication or private market transactions as well so it's a mix of broking private market transactions bonds and uh, certain uh, cat 2 ais uh, which give portion of the revenues up front okay got that thanks a lot thank you participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one Next question is from Sagar Kapadia, from in, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. So I have two questions from my side. One is in FY24, what is your broking revenue? And please provide me a split of this annual broking revenue between the institution side and the retail HNI side. And then further, provide me a split for, of the retail HNI to the cash side and FNO side. Yeah. Uh, our booking revenue for a 524 uh, stands at uh, 1995 crores. Yeah? Uh, and uh, retail and institution mix, uh, we have not been putting it out separately. Okay. And if you divide segregated okay. cash and FMO mix, uh, so I stated earlier in the call, our cash mix is 55%. Uh, yeah. Okay. And so another question. In last quarter uh, presentation, you had given that uh, very good example of the private equity, which many of them are closing down next year. That fund raised this rupees 100. If the IRR is 20% cumulatively for eight years, then the cumulative returns are 330, and the company makes 20% uh, carry on the sale. So carry income is 66. Now, please explain to me how do you report it? I mean, out of the 66 rupees, when the fund actually closes down, at that time, how much percentage is reported in the PNL? So basically, none of the carry uh, income is reported as a part of the operating profit. It is reported as a non-recurring income. However, this is uh, a very rare. Uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't happen. It happens once in, uh, you can say, three, four years. And that's why it is without as a non-recurring income and not a part of the operating profit in the asset and wealth segment. Yeah, okay, but when the fund closes down, then also it will be at that year, out of the 66 rupees, uh, how much percentage is, uh, you know, recognized in the PNL when actually the fund will exit, I think then you will be showing it in the PNL, right? Yes, this 66 is what is recognized over a period of, so all of this doesn't happen in a single year. The exit happened, uh, let's say, in the year 8, 9, 10. Okay, initially you are just returning principal and then uh, returning the hurdle, right? Only post the hurdle do you start earning carry. That carry typically uh, happened in the last three years of the fund, okay? Could be any mix depending on the exit that we make. Uh, so if there is 100 rupees original capital raised, then 66 is effectively, this is, a, uh, this is an illustration, it could be much higher or much lower than this number depending upon the IR delivered by the fund, but typically it will be in the last three years of the life yeah. of the fund. Okay, and it will be shown as a non recurring income, right? Yeah, so sorry to correct that. So actually, it will be shown separately. Uh, so there is an operating profit line item, and we also include an operating profit line item, including this carry income as a separate uh, line item to depict uh, that the normal run rate versus the annual run rate that we record from the carry is separately reported out. Okay, so in the profit uh, operating profit income, you will report it separately as this is the carry income in the operating profit, right? 
Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one. Next question is from Dinesh, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, Dinesh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but your voice is not very clear. If you're on a hands-free request, you to use the handset. Yeah, sorry. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, my I'm a housing finance company. I think that has been already answered. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. That was the last question in queue. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Shalibadra Shah for closing comments. On behalf of Mutilal Uthwal Financial Services, I would like to thank every investor and participant for attending this uh, call for Copper Core FY24. Uh, if you do have any further queries, please do let me know our investor relations desk. Uh, thank you and have a good evening. Thank you very much. On behalf of Moti Laloswal Financial Services, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.